Amen. Um, tonight, I think last Bible study, we were talking about angels. And um, tonight, we'll deal with the other side. Um, the topic I'm going to talk about tonight, most people are unaware of it. And not just unaware, but a lot of people don't like to talk about it in church. Uh, we talk about all the good, you know, flowery things in, in church, but there is a spirit realm that a lot of people are not familiar with. Uh, when we look at the Bible, there are different types of intelligences. First two that was created uh, was, and well, you have God, of course. And God is a spirit. Uh, Brother Bartimaeus, first. Get John chapter 4 and 24. All right. So you have God. Then God created angels. And God created man. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's turn to grace. It's all right. I'll use this. All right, read on. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. All right, so we got God, and he's a spirit. Then we have angels. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 1. So we have God. God, you know, now when we think about God, and, and, and I want you all to take a second here to think. When we think about uh, God and his creation, God didn't just create the earth. A lot of times when we, you know, uh, our narrow minds, we think that God just created the earth. So thus we just think that people exist, right? Because we think that God just created the earth. But God didn't just create the earth. The Bible says in Genesis, all right, we should read that, uh-huh, 2-1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. The heavens and the earth was finished. God had formed the earth. Uh -huh. And the seventh day. So you have the host of heaven, which are the angels. So you have, uh, let, me, let me do it like this. You have the universe. And we don't really, a lot of people don't really talk about the universe, but uh, the universe is greater or bigger, if you will, than just earth, all right? A lot of times we just talk, we, we just think about earth because we live here, but when we look at the Bible, we have God and angels, which obviously, God, you know, a lot of times we, we say that God is in heaven, but, you know, God is really outside of heaven. Uh, the Bible says uh, in the book of, go to 2 Kings, I believe it is, uh, um, 2 Samuel, or this might be 2 Kings chapter 8. The Bible talks about how the heavens... And, and heavens of heavens can't contain God. Let me show you this, which shows us how big God is. All right. Let me find it real quick. All right. What is it? Eighth chapter, right? First Kings 8 and 27. Yeah. First Kings 8 and 27. All right. Read. For God indeed dwell on the earth. Behold, Behold the, heaven the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain God. So God is so big that heaven can't just contain him. So this is why the Bible talks about heaven being God's throne, which deal with working place and earth being his footstool. All right. So now we have God. Of course, then we have angels that he created. So we have the heaven, and we'll say heavens because there are parts of heaven. I'm going to show y'all that tonight as well. So you got heaven, you have earth, all right? So heaven was created for the angels, then earth, obviously, for man. And after angels fell, so you had angels that committed sin, and because they did, they did not have blood, they couldn't be redeemed. So redemption is only for those that have blood. So we're thankful that we got blood, thus we can be redeemed. So if a person that have blood sin, 
they have been redeemed by blood. Angels didn't have blood, thus they can't be redeemed by blood. Everybody understand that? So every angel that has ever sinned, every angel that has ever backslidden, all of those angels transition, and now they're called devils. A lot of people don't know that. So we have, they're, they're called fallen angels, thus they're devils now. All right? Now, tonight, I'm going to talk about demonology, which is the study of demons. You won't find the word demon in the Bible, but uh, it comes from this word here, which there were devils, which obviously come from Satan. So Satan, when he fell, and now Satan was an angel. Go to the book of e uh, Ezekiel. All right, Ezekiel 28. And if you have a question, it's going to be a heavy topic tonight. I'm going to try not to keep y'all long. But if you have questions, you can raise your hand or write it down and set it up. And you can ask your question. All right. Ezekiel chapter 28. And we're going to start at verse number 12. I'll read. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. All right. So thou been in the, thou, thou been in Eden, the garden of God, which is a position, and I, and I don't have time to deal with the positions of angels, but angels covered territory. So they had a territory that they covered. So the garden of Eden was a territory. Then you'll see uh, in the Bible where it talks about how uh, Michael have a specific place and Gabriel had another place. These were archangels. All right, read, huh? The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that right. covereth. Thou art the what? The anointed cherub. Anointed cherub. All right. Anybody know what that word cherub means? It's a type of angel. So a ter cherub was a type of er angel. You'll see cherubim, seraphim. These are types of angels. So you'll see the Bible says that thou art the anointed cherub that covered. So this was Satan. Satan was an angel that covered God. So in essence, he was in a territorial, in, in, in a position where he was in front of God. All right, read, uh-huh. Thou was thou, thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Now, look thou at all this stuff. All this stuff is dealing with his past text. So uh, uh, dealing with his past. So it says, I have set thee so thou wast upon the holy mount of God. Uh-huh. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst the, of the stones of fire. This is dealing with what he used to do. Uh -huh, read. Thou wast perfect in thy ways. He was perfect. Uh -huh. From the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. Until iniquity was found in you. Uh -huh. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the songs of fire. All right. So now he get kicked out of his position in heaven. Now, heaven got parts. So you got, uh, anybody got this before I erase it? All right. If you don't, we got live. You can catch it. All right. Now, heaven got parts. So you got first heaven, second heaven, and a third heaven. All right. And from from earth, this is how it looks from earth and from heaven. All right. So from earth is first, second and third going up. So if I look up, this is how heaven looks. So you have the firmament, which is the first heaven. Then you have a heaven above that going up and then you have the third heaven. I'm going to show you this. Go to um, second Corinthians chapter uh, 13, I believe it is. Is that right? Or 12. Second Corinthians 12. All right. Second Corinthians 12. Read, uh-huh. 12 and 1, uh-huh. It is not expedient me for me, doubtless, to glory. Uh-huh. 
I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, uh -huh. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Caught up to the what heaven? Third. Third. So now this is giving us indication that there are parts of heaven. So now we got to, if it's a third one, it got to be a second one. And if it's a second one, it has to be a what? First. A first one. All right. Everybody been in math class, so we know. If there's a third, it got to be other, others under there. All right. So now this is how we view it from earth. First, second, third heaven. And then from the heavens down. Oh. All right. Thank you. Who that? Mike must have came. Thank you, son. All right. Got me some volume, man. Sound way better. All right. And then from the heaven down, this is how we look to them. So now, in this area up here, this is where, um, what's the fellow named? Lucifer. All right. Lucifer, which we know as, as Satan, this is where he was. Now, he got kicked out of there, right? Out of that position. But he didn't get kicked to earth. Because he said, you know, a lot, know a lot of folk will tell you that the devil is in hell and all that stuff like that. And you, you know, tell that lie and send it back to the devil that's in hell. The, the devil ain't in hell. He's not in hell right now. All right? Let me show you from the Bible. Go to Revelation chapter 12. All right? <coughs> I know sometimes you, you be hearing people say stuff and everybody just be agreeing with stuff. They ain't never read it before. And be saying, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, the devil in hell. The devil in hell. No, he ain't in hell. That's his, that's his final destination. He ain't there yet. Because if he was in hell, he wouldn't be bothering your money. <laughs> if, he, <laughs> if he was in hell, he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be bothered with your mind. Amen. If he was in hell, he wouldn't be bothered with your family. Why y'all ain't talking? Amen. All right. Let me show you this. All right, where I got you at? Revelation 12. Revelation 12 and uh, verse number 1, uh-huh. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. All of my sounding good now. Mike, you must be the prayer, boy. <laughs> and they got it right. All right, read, uh-huh. A woman clothed with the sun. Where does wonder happen at? In heaven. In heaven, uh-huh, read. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Uh -huh. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. But she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to, to his throne. Uh -huh. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. All right. And I, I, this is not a part of my lesson, and I don't want y'all to be confused, so I'm explaining what's going on. Now, the Bible is talking about a woman and a child being born. This woman is a representation of Israel, mm -hmm. and the child that's being born out of her is the church. Then it talks about the church, it, it talks about it being the child being caught up. That deals with the rapture. I just want to say that so y'all won't be confused. All right, read, uh-huh. And there was war in heaven. And there was war where? In heaven. In heaven, uh-huh. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. All right, the dragon. Y'all see that? You should call him the dragon, all right? Now, anybody, know? see, reason why he's called, well, I, I, I'll do that for later. Keep reading. Keep reading. And prevail not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Found where? In heaven. In heaven. Now the dragon is in heaven. Now they're going to explain who the dragon is. Read, huh? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. That old serpent. Uh -huh. Called the devil. Called the devil. And Satan. And Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. Now, the Bible says that the dragon was cast out. But this is happening later. So if this happens later, then this tells me that Satan is not in hell right now because it's later. This is, this is, this is prophecy about what's going to happen. I'm coming to you. So now he says that the old serpent, now, you know, everybody that know about a dragon and a serpent, if you do your research, they're in the same family. A snake is a serpent. I mean, a, a snake and a dragon is the same thing. One just got legs and, and one don't. But in all honesty, back in the day, a long time ago, 
All snakes had legs. They used to walk. Hey man, y'all must well read y'all Bible. Well, do what is it? Uh, look up animal history. <laughs> Go to Genesis. Genesis chapter three. All right. And start at 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, uh -huh. and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So now the snake got around his belly. Now if you look at snakes now, you can see they still, some of them still got standing power. They stand on their on they tails. If you look up, if you kind of look up serpent or snake, you'll see where they where their legs used to be uh, coming out of them. But y'all can look that up later. All right, let me get back. Now, go to the book of, um, uh, get uh, Hebrews chapter 11. All right. So we see that Satan, he got cast down. Uh, he lost his position in this part of heaven. So it was placed down the lower part of him. All right. All right. Now, I want you to, and, and, I, and I, I'll try to prove that. Because the Bible said that he's a prince of the power of something. Go to Ephesians real quick. And then we're going to go to Hebrews. When you're dealing with the spirit realm, you know, let me tell you all something. When you go to church, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's more depthness of God than Daniel and the lion's den. It's more depthness to God than the he three Hebrew boys that everybody was talking about. It's more than that. You got a lot of stuff that people uh, got to get and understand when it comes down to biblical precepts. Understand what's going on in the Bible so you can understand what's going on in the spirit realm. And one thing about, you know, getting in God and becoming spiritual, you get open to a spirit realm. All right? So this is why I'm going to teach y'all this so y'all can understand a lot of stuff that be happening. A lot of stuff is spiritually influenced. All right? Read, huh? What I said? Three and one. Uh, chapter two. And verse number uh, two and two. Wherein, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. Walked according to the course of the world. According to the prince of the power of the air. According to the prince of the power of the what? The air. Of the air. All right. So this is the, talking about Satan. He's the prince of the power of the air. Uh huh. The spirit. That now, now worketh in the children of disobedience. All right. So this person that he's talking about. It's saying that the Bible says that he's a prince of the power of the air. So when we look at the air, of course, you know, it's really talking about his existence in the spirit realm in the third heaven. All right. Now, I want you to get the book of um, Hebrews chapter 11. All right. Then I'm going to kind of go a little further into this understanding uh, of uh, demons and demonic presences and different things like that. And I do want to make this disclaimer. There is a such thing as a demonic possession where the, a spirit overtakes a person and overtakes their body, and there is something called demonic influence. Two different things. A person can be full of the devil, and then you can have somebody that's just influenced by the devil. So you got people that are being in church, and they say, and they can be influenced by the devil. don't mean that they possess by the devil. It's a different thing. And, and I'm going to show you that in, in the Bible in just a second. All right. Hebrews chapter 1, uh, 11, and verse number 1. What does it say? All right. Now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Uh -huh. Through faith we understand that the worlds. All right. Look at that word, worlds. So it says we understand that the what? Worlds. Worlds. That's plural. Uh-huh. Were framed by were the word of God. Framed by word of God. The word of God. Uh-huh. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. All right. Now, that, th that world talks about these worlds. So you have the upper world, you have the middle world, and then you have the underworld. All right. Upper world, obviously, is the heavens. Middle world is the earth realm. And then the underworld, obviously, deals with hell. All right. 
So now, and, and obviously in, in hell you got parts. Just like you got three heavens, you got parts of the underworld, which you have hell, um, lake of fire, and uh, bottomless pit. All right, those are different parts, all right? Now, uh, so he talks about those worlds, and now with, within those worlds, we got to understand the beings in those worlds, which I explained, angels, uh, devils, if you will, and humans, all right? Now, the reason why people get possessed is because there are devils or demons everywhere, and they're looking for ways to get inside of you because they can't be seen. See, the devils, go to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Devils used to have, I mean, not, not devils, but the angels, which are now, you know, the demons today are, used to be angels. But what happened was they had to, the ability to uh, come to the earth. They would be in the heavens, and then they had the ability to come to earth. Only way they came to earth is when they put on a body. And the bodies that they put on, they had male bodies. All of the angels in the Bible were men. There were never any women angels. You'll never find one in the Bible. But you'll see that every time an angel came down from heaven, he came in a male body. All right? Now, read. How do I got you up? 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. And uh, 15. And start at 39. All right? All flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. For there is one kind of flesh of men, uh -huh. another flesh of beasts, uh -huh. another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Now, so you talk about celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. All right? Anybody know what a celestial body is? All right? It's a heavenly body uh, or a heavenly being, if you will. These are uh, um, people that essentially live forever. So when Adam was created, he was created a celestial being. This is why he didn't know death. That's why the Bible says, in the day you eat thereof, you're going to die. Because death wasn't associated with him. Thus, he had to put on an earthly body. So now, th th when he put on an earthly body, that was associated with death. You know, see, everybody in the earthly body is one day going to die. The Bible talks about every man is appointed to death. Us, because we're going to die one day. Everybody's going to die, right? And, and, and the, the good thing is that when you're in Christ, uh, you, 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 you're not considered, or you take your death when you're baptized. That's, that's that death. And then, so that's why the Bible talks about when people that, the Bible talks about those that sleep in Jesus. So, you know, everybody talking about rest in peace and all that stuff like that. That's really for saints. Because everybody ain't resting in peace. Y'all looking at me like that, like I'm saying something wrong. That's the truth. <laughs> the man that went and shot up everybody, and then they killed him. They tell him he rested in peace. That person said he rested in peace. <laughs> they put everybody, everybody be in heaven. You go to funeral, everybody be in heaven. But I ain't going to talk about that tonight. All right. So <laughs> there are different bodies, all right? The celestial body is the angelic or the uh, uh, immortal body. All right? Then talks about terrestrial bodies. So what the angels would do was on their way down, if they had to give a message or if there was some, anything going on, and some of them just came to earth just to visit, right? Um, go to the book of Genesis. This is the first time that we'll hear about the sons of God. Now, when you see sons of God in the book of Genesis chapter 6, it's not talking about mankind. He was talking about his angels. He wasn't talking about mankind because he separates it and says, sons of God and daughters of men. All right? Give me Genesis 6 and 1, huh? And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters was born unto them, that the sons of God. The what? The sons of God. Sons of God. Saw the daughters of men. Ah, now we got a difference. Sons of God, and it talks about daughters of men. Why, why the daughters wouldn't be daughters of God? Why is it saying daughters of God? Talks about the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were what? Fair. 
Why in the world is the Bible talking about these men saying that these girls were pretty? This is what the fair talking about. They're beautiful. I ain't never seen it like that. You know why? Because in, in heaven, ain't no women. So this is why when they came to earth, they saw these women. They said, man, we got to hang out down here. <laughs> man, all these brothers up here, man, I ain't, <laughs> I ain't never seen a woman like this, man. God, okay, he, he done withhold something from you, withheld something from you. This, this is, in essence, y'all can smile, it's all right. It, 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 <laughs> this is essentially what happened. Essentially, they, they saw these women. They never saw women in their life until they came to the earth because in the heavens, these are just men. Celestial men bodies. Right? You see men all day, then you come to earth and see something that looked different. Say, whoa. This is why they start marrying them. Watch this. Read, huh? That they were fair, uh -huh. and they took them wives of all which they chose. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Uh -huh. Yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. Uh -huh. There were giants in the earth in those days. This is the uh the giants were product of the angels. So the angels mixing their gene, and it's, uh, if you do a study on um, the blood, I forget the, it's a, a blood type where you can help everybody else with this blood type, but nobody can help you with this blood type except for that same blood. I, I forget the, is it, oh, oh is it O negative or it's, it's, some, it's one of them. I think it's, it might be something, whatever it is. Is it O negative? Okay. So I think I'm, o, no, uh, but anyway, <laughs> I think I'm O positive. I'm O positive. Okay. All right. But anyway, these, it, it, this puts me in the mind of angels. Now, this is my, this is my, th I ain't got no Bible to say this, and I'm going to make this disclaimer. This is my thought in my mind is that there's still blood out here from the angels because nobody else can give them blood, but they can give everybody blood. Is that not strange? And then all other blood can, you know, go with each other. But anyway, all right. So it talks about the giants in those days. So the giants were products of these uh, angelic beings coming in the male form and uh, mangling with women. And God got upset. Read, uh-huh. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that everything, excuse me, every imagination or the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So when they started uh, uh, coming together, mingling together, and it, it, it birthed a new type of creature. It, it, they had these giants that essentially it wasn't what God set up. So God got upset. He got mad, and he said, man, I, 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 he got so upset, he said, man, I'm mad that I even created y'all. <laughs> because the angels did this. And so you had these angels that left their habitation. That goes, goes to, leave your finger there at Genesis and go down into the book of Jude. This Bible study, right? So y'all gonna have to turn some pages, all right? Go to Jude. Right, one and six. And the angels, which kept the, not their first estate. All right, they did not keep their. First, everybody know what estate mean, right? Essentially, home, or residence, or living place, right? So they did not keep their first estate. Uh huh. But left their own habitation. But they left their own habitation. In essence, they left heaven on purpose, and a lot of them. Some of them did one thing with women, and then you had angels that was doing other things with men. That's right. I, I got Bible to show you this now. The angels, you had angels doing things with women, and then they turned around and started doing things with men, and the judgment of God was on them. So then they got stripped of their tangibility, if you will, or being seen. So now... The, well, now demons, devils that are everywhere, essentially they're trying to occupy a body because they can't be seen. So this is why you got to be careful of uh, what you watch. So you got portals. Look, listen out for what, you, what you're hearing or putting in your spirit 
because these demons are trying to find a body to get inside of because they're upset that they can't be seen. Can you imagine being in a room, shut, shut, and no, nobody sees you. Nobody pins. That's how the demons are. They look around. They try to swing everything, but they cannot be seen. So you say, you know what? I'm going to get in this TV, so let them watch something. I'm going to get in this music. A lot of it is music. I, ain't, I don't want to do it because we're going to be here all night if I deal with music. But a lot of it, it's in music. And you'll see the behaviors of people changing. And it's because demonic spirits are in music, movies. Y'all here? Okay. All right. I'll deal with that later. All right. So it talks about the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Uh huh. Read. He had reserved an everlasting chain. He reserved an everlasting chain. Under darkness unto the judgment uh, of the great day. So now these set of angels, so you got the set of angels that left their habitation, and, and, and these, these brothers, let me show you all them. We have some of them. These, some of these fellas, rough. I, they, he had to lock them up. That these ones in um, Genesis chapter 19, these ones had to get arrested. They had put them. <laughs> he, had to, he had to lock them brothers up, man. He said, y'all are doing some wild stuff. All right. All right. So go to uh, Genesis chapter 19 and 1. All right. And there came two angels. There came two what? Angels. Angels. To Sodom and Even. To Sodom and Even. Huh? And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them arose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in. I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed one verse. All right. Please leave your finger there. <laughs> Please stay right there. All right. Go back to Jude. We missed one verse. We, we missed verse 7. All right. So read 6 and 7 one more time, then we got to go back to Genesis so we can get the understanding of what's going on. All right? And the angels which kept not their first estate. They did not keep their first estate. But uh -huh. left their own habitation. Left their own habitation. He had reserved an everlasting chains under, the, under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Uh-huh. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like Even night. as what? Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah. All right? Read, uh-huh. And the cities about them in like manner, uh -huh. giving themselves over to fornication, fornication and going after strange and flesh. And going after strange flesh. So this is talking about the angels. They had a they had a little they had a little funny behaviors. Read, uh huh, uh huh. Flesh are, are set forth for an, an example, uh -huh. suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Suffering. Right, now, now leave it there. Now let's go back to Genesis chapter 19. All right, so this is give us an explanation about what was going on. All right, read on. Uh -huh. And there came two angels there to Sodom two. at even. Uh -huh. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them arose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Uh -huh. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, uh -huh. and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. Mm -hmm. And they said, nay. They was like, <laughs> they said, nah, we good. We done heard about y'all in this city. Read, uh-huh. But we will abide in the street all night. Said, we'd rather stay in the street all night than to come in your house because we know how this city operates. Read, uh-huh. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him and entered in his house. Uh -huh. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread. And they did eat. Uh -huh. But before they lay down, the men of the city. The men in the city. Watch this now. Uh -huh. Even the men of Sodom uh -huh. compassed the house round, both old and young, uh -huh. all the people from every quarter. So now they saw that there was men, new men in the city. And they knew that they were angels because there were some angels that came in that city before and was doing strange things with the men. Watch this. Read, uh huh? And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? <laughs> they said, they said, where them, <laughs> they said, Where them brothers at? We just saw some men come through here. Where they at? Uh, read. Bring them out unto us. Said, Bring them out to us. That we may know them. That we may do what? Know them. They're not talking about getting no phone number and, and information. 
shall, that we may know them. Now, let me show you and prove to you what no mean in the Bible. Leave your finger there because we got to get an understanding. Go to Genesis chapter 4 and 1. Genesis chapter 4 and 1. Uh-huh. And, and Adam knew Eve, his wife. He did what? He knew he Eve. He knew her. And what happened when he and knew her? And she conceived. And she conceived. So no didn't have nothing to do with, you know, hey, my name is Seth. Or hey, my name is Eli. That, it, that wasn't no one. No new meant sex in the Bible. So he said he, that, that we may know them. Let me, let me prove this now. Go back down there to Genesis 19. All right? And they called on Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came in the city? Bring them out unto us that we may what? Know them. Know them. Read, uh-huh. And Lot went out at the door unto them uh -huh. and shut the door after him. Uh-huh. And said, I pray you, brethren, uh -huh. do not so wickedly. Uh, why would he say, uh, if he said no one, why would he say that that's wicked to know him? What's wicked about me knowing somebody? Because he understood the concept of what they was trying to do. Watch what Lot, Lot didn't go ahead and give him an offer. Watch this read. Huh? Behold, now I have two daughters. I got what? Two, two daughters. daughters. Why, why, are you, why are you talking about giving, giving women? Because they wanted men. Behold, now I have what? Two daughters, two daughters uh -huh. which have not known Which man. have not what? No. There's that no word again. Didn't know a man. Neither that they were virgins. They didn't know a man. Uh -huh. Read. Let me, I pray you, Let bring me, them I out. Let me, I pray you, bring them out. Unto you, uh -huh. and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Uh -huh. Only unto these men do nothing. Only unto these men do nothing. Uh -huh. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Uh -huh. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fella came in to sojourn, and he would needs be a judge. Uh -huh. Now will we deal worse with thee they than said, with them? They said, now, hold on now. Are we going to deal worse with you if you don't give us these guys? Read, uh-huh. And they pressed sore upon the man. They pressed sore upon him. Uh-huh. Even lie. Even lie. And came near to break the door. Now, what, what kind of... <laughs> now, they, 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 they went through that. So this, now, they was they was trying to break down the door. So you are telling me now this is this is the Bible. A lot of people don't even they never read this in the Bible before. Said, Man, these folks out here trying to they trying to break the door down. They said, "Boy, you remember the angels last time came down here? They, they, said, they tried to break down the door." Watch this now. It get worse. It get worse than this. Read. Uh -huh. But the men put forth their hand uh -huh. and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. It got so bad that the angels had to yank them in there and hurry up and slam the door. Read. Uh -huh. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. The angels had the ability. Not only just they had the ability, but they smote every man with blindness. All the guys that was out there trying to break in the door, the angels hit them and made them blind. Read, uh huh. Watch what happens. Both small get. and great. Small and great, uh huh. So that they wearied themselves to find the door. They still was trying to get in the door. <laughs> they, listen, Seth, they, get, they blinded the men. And they still, they, they, try to, they try to figure their way out how to get through that door because of the angels. Wow. Read, uh huh. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides uh -huh. son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. Uh -huh. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So the angels was given an uh, indication of what God was about to do. So the chapter before you will have God manifested as or appeared as Melchizedek and he's having a conversation with Abraham and everybody ever heard a story that Abraham was saying well will you say 40 will you say 35 he kept doing a countdown during this countdown this is the stuff that's going on on the other end because he sent the angels out to go scope out the city that's how God was able to answer and say no nah, it, it ain't 40 no nah, it ain't 35 because the angels was in the city and they was getting the calculations everybody understand that Anyway, so these are the, the ones that are locked away. These are devils. These angels have become demons because of the things that they've done. They tamper with the, the men on the earth. They tamper with the women, all right? Go, I want you to go to, um, uh, go back to Revelation. Let me show you what these look like real quick, and then, and then I'll move forward. Man, I wish I had some time tonight. All right. 
I thought y'all was gonna say I had time. <laughs> you know, normally, I wish I had some time. Normally, they say, take your time fast. Anybody said nothing. I'm saying, <laughs> anybody say nothing. Huh? All right. Let me get y'all out of here then. All right. <laughs> Revelations 9. All right. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Remember, they were locked away. The Bible says in the book of Jude that they were in chains, they were arrested. All right. And we look at Re Revelation chapter 9 and 1, it says, uh-huh. And the fifth angel sounded. And the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Uh-huh. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Uh-huh. And the he opened what? the bottomless pit. What he gave him? The key. A key. So the only, only time you need a key is when you got to unlock something. Then the Bible talks about them being in chains under the earth. So these are the same spirits now. Keep reading, uh huh. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth had power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Uh -huh. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a, striketh a man. So essentially, and, and, and we're going to finish this because I want to get the description of these, these uh, beasts that, was, that are going to come to the earth. Essentially what's going to happen is uh, once the rapture take place, and I'm not dealing with the rapture tonight, but once the rapture take place, these, these demons that are in hell that were locked up are going to come on the earth. And everybody that's here that's left on the earth will have to go through that tribulation and torment period. And, you know, there will not be, and let me repeat, there will not be salvation for us during that time. There will only be salvation for 144,000, and they're going to be Hebrew men. That's it. Everybody that's listening to the gospel, everybody that hear the gospel today, and throughout this time, you won't get the opportunity of the gospel because there won't be any salvation during that time. So whenever the rapture take place, that's it. There ain't no, you know, I know there's these movies lie and say once the rapture takes place, everybody's going to be going to church, talking about, you know, how I'm going to be saved and all stuff like that. They ain't going to go to church, but there ain't going to be no pastors there. It's going to be over. Once that, once that stuff happens, once that day come, when the Lord come back and meet us in the clouds, we look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 14, you'll see that it talks about when that trumpet sounds, church is out of here. That's it. Only people that's going to be saved is 144,000 Hebrew men that have not heard the gospel. Not us that's hearing it today. We don't get that opportunity. That's for people that, that have never heard it before. And the Bible talks about it's going to be two witnesses, Elijah and Moses. They're going to come down. And they're going to be preaching, and that message is going to save the 144,000. Because the Bible talks about in the book of Matthew chapter 17, it says that there was, it, Jesus was on the mountain of transfiguration. He had Peter, James, and John with him. And on that mountain of transfiguration with those three, you had Moses and Elijah. And the Bible said that God said, hear ye him. And so Jesus started giving the information of salvation for us today. Because the Bible says, except a man born of water and of spirit, he can't enter into the kingdom. That applies. But it's only for that 144,000 during that time and for us now. So once that rapture takes place, that's it. Amen. I just wanted to say that because a lot of people say during the tribulation period, that will be a time to say, oh, I'm ready to get saved. And No, nah, you get saved now. When you hear the gospel today, that's when you, you know, heart not your heart. That's when you draw not. When you hear the gospel today, you can't wait until... It, you know, the chaos is on the, on the world and all this stuff going on and these demons are present on earth. Of course, everybody's going to want to be saved then. I mean, anybody in their right minds, you start seeing stuff that don't look right. You're like, man, Lord, I probably should have been in church last week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, read. Uh -huh. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. It's going to get so bad, they're going to see all these demonic forces on the earth. People are going to be trying to die. They won't be able to die. They're going to be hanging themselves and still living. Look at this. He's going to have a long neck between <laughs> sitting up there, hanging, <laughs> still alive, Ooh. jumping in the water, <laughs> turning to fish. They're going to be alive. Everybody, read, huh? 
And should de shall desire to die. They're going to desire to die. And death shall flee from them. The spirit of death is going to be gone. Uh -huh. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. All right, so you got horses. Uh -huh. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. Uh -huh. And their faces were as faces of men. All right, so you got a man face. Uh -huh. And they had hair as the hair of women. And they had hair of women. Uh -huh. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. All right, then they got teeth like lions. So this is the type of beast that's going to be on the earth. Now, the reason why God did this or allowed them to look like that is because of the behavior that they had. First thing they did was they came to the earth and messed with the women. Came to the earth and then the Bible talks about they was going after strange flesh, dealing with beasts. Mm -hmm. So the angels was doing all this little funny behavior because the Bible talks about a man not lying down with, with, with mankind like, like they would with womankind. And it also talks about how they should not lay down with an animal. And today, in this world today, I, I think I saw somebody marry their dog or something like that. Bestiality. So the, these, are the, these are the things that's happening in the world, but God said, you know what, I'm going to fix it. So when these demons come out, I'm going to give them exactly what they want. So you got a, a, a beast that's mixed with a man, Mixed with a woman and a beast all together because that's what they wanted. That's what people wanted. They wanted this mixed up thing. Go down to the book of Leviticus 19, and then we're going to ride back up there. All right? Leviticus, I mean 18, I'm sorry. 18 and 22. All right, read. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither so it said a man should be with a man because it's an abomination. Read, uh huh. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself. And you should not lay with. down with no animal because neither you're going to de defile yourself. Uh huh. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. Uh huh. Because it's it what? is confusion. He said it's confusion. He didn't even say it was an abomination. He said that's just confusion. You know, they don't. They, they ain't no dog and no woman supposed to be together. That's just, that's. Folks do stuff like that. They need a little help. You know, they, you know, they need they need more than prayer. They need some type of conversation. Something ain't right. <laughs> ain't mess with animals, right? So this is what happens. All right. So you have this type of beast because this is what the world and especially America. This is what America allow. This is what America wants to happen. They, you know, freedom. Let, let them do that. They mess with this animal. Mess with that and all that stuff like that. All right, so these are the different demons and spirits. All right, now somebody have a question. When does, when did, or when does Satan have an angelic appearance, or the dragon with horns? Well, the dragon with horns is not <coughs> necessarily an appearance; it's symbolic. So now, when you see horns on heads, those mean like dominions, authorities, different areas like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that. The devil, he, he, he ain't going to come looking like no, no dragon because he's a deceiver. And deceivers want you to think there's something that they're not. So, you know, I know people look at it, they have, you know, the devil, they think he got a pitchfork and he flaming in red. Uh, no, that ain't, that, he ain't coming like that. He going to come looking like somebody. He going to come looking like a, a, a president. He going to come looking like somebody that you won't think is a demon or a devil, if you will. Because devils want to be slick. You know, they, they, listen, watch this. The first time he was mentioned in the Bible, he wasn't himself. Give me Genesis 3 and 1. My God, I love Bible study. All right, Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 1. Now the serpent, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye should not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, First time he's on the scene, what is he? He's a snake. But is that what he originally was? No. He came in disguise. He came with a costume on. And that's how we got to look out. See, the Bible talks about not being ignorant of his devices. Because he's slick. The reason he used a snake is because of the character of a snake. All right, give me 
Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11. Let's start at 5. Okay. All right. 2 and 11. Uh-huh. Lest Satan, Lest Satan should, get an advantage of us, should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Satan can use anything. He want he want to be. He don't want you to know. And, and this is the thing. One of the, the, the Satan love an ignorant church. He love a church that ain't taught. Stop doing this. You hear me teaching stuff like this. You don't like this. Because it's exposing. Because if you start learning stuff like this, you ain't want, look, you know, when we go to Bible studies and, and all we're talking about is Daniel and Lion Den, ain't nobody listen. Daniel and Lion Den, we, we, everybody tired of that story. We need to hear something with some meat. Yes, sir. The devil don't want you to get no meat. He wants you to sit in churches where you just listen to these old little stories. They be in there for 10, 15 minutes, and then you're out of there. No education at all. I need to be educated. You can call yourself a Christian. You need to be as- educated on what you in the Bible. That's why you need to know where your books of the Bible is. You should know, be able to find it. Amen. I know y'all, you know, New Age, you know, they got them phones. So they, it's, it's easier to locate them scriptures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy to, when I was growing up, we had to, we had to get this book. They say go to, <laughs> go to Ezekiel, we had to find it. Yeah. On that phone, it's easier. When somebody open up a Bible, they, they confused, like, wait, hold on. <laughs> Where Ezekiel at in the back? But Satan is a deceiver. And so if he's a deceiver, then he has to come in ways that we do not know. And this is why a lot of people are demonically possessed, because they don't know which way he's coming. Because we're looking for a snake on the ground, or we're looking for somebody that's dressed like a witch, and somebody that, you know, with a pitchfork and a red suit on. We're looking for the things that show he don't want to be seen, so he got to be disguised. In order to infiltrate a system, you got to come in there where you don't, you don't know what's going on. Let me show you this. Go back to Jude, and then, and then we're going to go to Mark real quick. I want to show you some of these folk in the Bible that was possessed. A lot of people don't, don't believe in possession. They think it's movie stuff. People be having devils for real. <laughs> All right? Read, uh-huh. One in uh, three, I think it is. One in three. Beloved, uh-huh. when I gave all diligence to write unto you uh-huh. of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh-huh. For there are certain men crept in unawares. For there are certain men that did what? Crept in. How? Unaware. Unaware. So I blend in. I make it seem like I'm here to do the right thing, but in my mind, I have a different motive. Mm-hmm. Read, uh-huh. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, uh-huh. ungodly men, uh-huh. turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only go- Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so, so it shows that people have crept in to churches unaware. And they have condemnation on them. They're already condemned. They're just coming in. Meaning that there are people full of the devil, but they're in disguise. Because they preach real good. Because they look real good. A lot of times we look at things on the outside and don't understand what's going on on the inside. And as so many people get so deceived, they get so deceived, you know, they don't understand. And let me tell you, every demon, I'm going to go into demons here in a second. Every demon ain't crawling on the floor, swiveling and all that and all that stuff. Every demon don't do that. You got intellectual ones. You got smart ones. People that speak well. I'll show you that. Uh, well, I got you that now. Jude, go to Romans 16, 17. S- s- verse, chapter 16, verse number 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, uh-huh. mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, uh-huh. and avoid them. Uh-huh. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. But their own belly. Uh-huh. And by good words. By what? 
good, good words, words sound good uh-huh. and fair speeches good speeches they got a good word it, it sound real good uh-huh deceive the hearts of deceiving the simple deceiving the hearts of the simple the hearts of the simple is people that don't have education on the scripture people that just don't know no better people that just go with anything it just if it sound good i'm going with it the bible talks about how we're no longer children being carried away with every wind of doctrine. So when you see people that, that, that you know, a lot of times we get so ignorant, we just flow with anything. I need some Bible. I, you got to have to show me some Bible to back what you're talking about. You got to give me some scripture. Amen. Sometimes we, we listen to folk, they ain't got one verse to prove what they're saying. They're just talking. Emotionalized messages. Telling people, oh, this, 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 this. Like, where is that in the Bible? Well, you know, it don't say that, but this, this no, 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 hold on now. We got to get back to the book. What the book say? People have their little famous scripture talking about try the spirit by the spirit. We got to try that spirit by the spirit. And that's not nowhere in the Bible. <laughs> it's like me preaching, talking about the Bible says, uh, just like a, a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Y'all going to look at me like a man crazy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people preaching stuff, talking about stuff. They don't have any substance, no root. All right, give me Mark. Mark chapter 5. Oh, this is a good question. How do you know if you are demonically possessed? That's a wonderful question. I'm going to tell you something. Everybody in the Bible that had a demon knew they had one. This day and age, a lot of people know that they have a problem, but they don't know that it's a demon. Because they don't, they're not educated on the spirit realm. So this is the importance of the preacher. The preacher's job to make sure that you're educated on the spirit realm. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 3 and 15, it says that God has given uh, pastors according to his heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So the job of a pastor is to give you information and make sure you understand the information. A lot of people know that there's something wrong and they go see psychiatrists. They go see the therapist. They go, they know something wrong. They, I, I don't, I don't, I, there's something wrong. I just need to, you know, I need to talk to somebody. And they don't know that it's, it could be a possession. Now, 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 not everybody that has something going on, let me make this clear, because I don't want y'all leaving. That pastor, you know what? Last night I just couldn't sleep. Maybe I got a demon. <laughs> no, nah, that's, <not> <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. I, 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 I'm not saying, I'm coming to you, I'm coming to you. I'm not saying that every single thing that a person feel or experience means that they have a demon. But there are some things, and, you know, if it line up with the scriptures, because there are a bunch of spirits that the Bible talks about. And a lot of things that stem from trauma, hurt, a lot of that stuff, you know, a lot of people build up stuff like that internally due to stuff that they went through. And that stuff ain't never get cast out. Uh, God, y'all all right? Okay, let me show y'all some Bible. I don't want y'all to say that pastor said or all this stuff ain't getting no Bible. Let me get your question. Yes, ma'am. Can a habit, well, a, a habit can turn into, the wrong habit can turn into a possession. The wrong habit. So, you know, a lot of people that get that hooked on different type of drugs and stuff like that, that stuff start, if you, if you get hooked on that thing long enough, you'll have some type of possession. You don't know what it is. You, you out here growling and barking at people. And stuff like that, and it's because you don't got you, you don't allow that uh, uh, addiction to overtake you. So this is why you got to be careful in your activity. Be careful in what you're listening to, saying because these are all your portals. Now let's talk about portals real quick, and I'm gonna get that uh, Mark chapter five and one. All right. All right. Anybody know what the portals are? Eyes, ears, mouth, nose, sexual parts, absolutely. Very good. So these are the things that we guard. This is why it's very important. I'm going to start with the bottom one because, you know, th this, this, this age, you got to be very careful. That's why you don't just sleep around. Why y'all ain't saying nothing? Be because, you know, you don't know what a person has. We ain't, we ain't not talking about diseases. 
but spirits. And having sex with everybody, you trying to figure out why you can't walk forward. <laughs> just walking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm joking. All right, y'all. Y'all don't want to listen to me tonight. I had to wake y'all up. I had to wake y'all up. Y'all was snoozing on me. All right. <laughs> All right. So, 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 so this is why you got to be very careful. You know, every time, you know, because sometimes it's just, you know, I, 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 you, you get hooked on certain things. And, you know, some people, th- you got to understand, you know, sex is a portal. And sometimes you're trying to figure out why you feel a certain type of way and all those different things like that. It's because of, it could be because of sex, who you had sex with. That person can be full of the devil. My God. And you're just having a good old time and you're about to be, be full of the devil too. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that what they call a demon town. They're a demon town. <laughs> Trying to figure out why you out here howling to the moon. <laughs> so, so, so you got to be careful with that. All right. And I don't want to go over all of these, but some of the important ones I want to deal with tonight. Now, wh- another important one is your ears. Them ears. Listening to the wrong stuff. And one of the main things that people listen to that get them demonically possessed is music. It's music. Oh, yeah, it's music. I'll give you an example how listening puts you in a spirit realm. Even if you go to sleep with the TV on, while you're sleeping, sometimes what you're hearing is playing in your dream. So your dream becomes what you're hearing because dreaming is a spirit world. My God, I wish I had somebody tonight. So, 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 Hearing things, and, and, and you got to bring, I know, I know some of that stuff may, may sound good and, and make your head bobble. And, uh, and watch, now watch this now. Watch this. Watch it. <laughs> Listen at certain music. The people have the same behaviors, the same movement. You listen to the book, they, they just be like, everybody be like, that. <laughs> and, then, and then they start, listen, I've watched people go down the street rapping and all type of stuff, and they're doing all this. Like, oh my God. The spirit, y'all, I'm telling you, it's spirits. It's, it's, it's possessing them. And some of y'all, y'all get so hooked on this. I don't even know these new people's names and stuff. I, I don't know. The only person I know probably in rap world now is Lil Wayne. He's been in out for a long time. But he, you know, oh, you know what? You know what? There's a fella. Um, that that I learned about. Uh, the saints told me lose him, lose lose something. Lucifer. Yeah, listen to his name, Lucifer. And everybody bumping this this fella music, and everybody has the same motion. And people are doing the same or having the same behaviors. Watch this. You got people that listen to gang violence music. What do they start doing? They become what the music is saying. Oh. And now they got women rappers out. And so look at the behavior of women now. Oh, my gosh. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The behavior of women have changed because of the women rappers. So there's a different nature uh, or concept or mentality of a woman because of the music that's being played. Ooh, uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I know I'm talking right. That's why you got to be careful of that music. That, that music will have you so messed up. Watch this. When, when you, see, I'm, 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 I'm a little older than you guys, and, 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 and when, I, when I would listen to music, I wasn't a rap person. I listened to slow jams. So I used to listen to R&B. Y'all probably don't know. They still say that nowadays? No? All right. But so, so it was slow, slower music. But watch this. When people were getting breakups back in the day and they was depressed, they would turn on some slow jams. And they listened to all of the heartbreak music 
And all that stuff did was make them feel worse. I remember one of the ladies said, said you ain't nothing but a penny with a hole in it or something like that. <laughs> and <laughs> y'all probably don't know nothing about that. Who was that? Uh, anybody born in the 80s in here? <laughs> but it, it was, she, she, was just she was so upset because whatever he did, and she said, you ain't worth nothing but, you ain't worth more than a penny with a hole in it or something. I wish my sister was here. She'd be able to tell me exactly <laughs> who it is. My God. Anyway, I'm going to find out. But anyway, that concept get in that person's spirit, and so whatever's being played in the music, they become it. So now their behavior becomes what the music is saying. Amen. Y'all with me? All right. I mean, let me go, and I'm not going to go too deep in that tonight because music is, a, I, that's a, I, I need a whole night. Or two, or three. All right? Now, we got eyes. Woo-wee. Got the eyes. All right. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me be, be careful here. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but the Bible talks about, you know, see, eyes can do a lot of things. So, of course, we got the lust. And, you know, a lot of times what people watch nowadays is porn. And let me tell you, it's spirit. Oh, y'all ain't about to say. Y'all ain't, anybody going to say nothing now? Everybody, let me, let me talk to somebody that's looking at me. Anybody going to look at me? Okay. Porn and masturbation, it puts off a homosexual spirit. Let me tell you why. Because, first of all, if a man is touching himself, that's a man touching a man. I don't care if it's you or not. You're touching a man. And it should not be comfortable. Oh, God, y'all, ain't, let me just look at the board. Anybody saying that, Joe? Why they ain't talking tonight? Why, why anybody saying that? You should not be comfortable making yourself ple- a feel of pleasure come from you, and you're a man. So it produces a spirit of a man. Then you start looking at men differently. I'm trying to help. <laughs> y'all all right? Did, it, did the heat get turned on? Why y'all <laughs> people sweating and stuff? In my <laughs> it produces a spirit. And now in your mind, you're having sex with yourself. And you're a man. And you're a woman. You're having sex with yourself. I'm going to give you the Bible so you can see it in the Bible. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. People struggle with that. Struggle with it. You, and you got to be careful because there's a spirit in there. It's a, it's a spirit that follows that pornography and all that stuff like that. It, it, it get in your spirit and I have you, you know, looking at things differently. It causes you to lust more. A woman can't walk by without you glued to her backside. Why y'all ain't talking? Got porn put off that. Then the Bible talks about if you lust after a woman, it talks about how you're committing adultery on your own. Well, you can hear feathers in here falling. Now. It got us so quiet. All right, read, uh-huh. Know ye not? Know ye not? That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh-huh. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, uh-huh. nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Abusers of themselves. Do I need to go in detail here? Oh, y'all got it. Y'all got it? You need details? Okay. I got you. Let me get a drink of water because it's about to get a little hot. <laughs> so abusers, when you when when the Bible talks about abusing yourself, they had a, a, a saying when when a man is masturbating, they said he was f- feet fighting himself, if you will. 
I'm not going to use the term, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't have to say it. So that's what it's, that, that, it, it came from that term, being an abuser of himself. Woman, same thing. You, you abuse yourself too. It's the same concept. So this is why, and it comes from the lesson of life. It's just really about self-control. Amen. Why y'all looking so uptight? I'm trying to help. Well, y'all done been there before. Don't look at me like that. Y'all done watch them videos and stuff. You've you been there. Y'all done been. Why y'all, why y'all acting like that? Is there? And if, and, and if, see, 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 this is how people get help. If you don't talk, if, if I'm in here talking about stuff that y'all ain't dealing with, I, I, you know, it, it don't make no sense to me to be up here. But I need to talk about what people are going through and what they're experiencing. Because you can't get help if, if I'm not talking about, I can't talk about something that y'all not dealing with. This is what this community of, of individuals are dealing with. Masturbation is pornography is one of the main things, you know, that's going on with people today. In the church and out the church. Amen. And I'm telling you, if you allow this thing to, you know, get control of you, it could actually take over you. And then it, you, you'll be almost like you can't control yourself. Amen. All right, let me, let, let me help y'all. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me help y'all. I've been there before. I watched porn when I was 12 years old up until about 22. And I'm almost, I'll be 40 in a few years. So. <laughs> but, but from the age of 12, watch me, up until 22, so I know, I know what it's like, and I know what it's like. That thing was in my mind. In my, I said, man, I got to get away from this thing. It, it'll have you hooked. Why y'all ain't saying nothing? Until I start understanding, I said, oh, man, this is some funny behavior. Why am I here touching myself? And I said, you know what? <laughs> this can't be right. And then I heard a message that was preached that was talking about it, and I said, yeah, that, it ain't right. It don't, it don't seem, when you think about it, it'll make you feel nice. You're like, hold on now. Did I just do? Did I, uh, what did I just do? I'm I'm doing myself. Amen. I'm trying to help. Amen. Somebody <laughs> lift your hand and say, "Lord, help me." <laughs> that thing had me in a chokehold. Had me messed up. I, it's almost like it'd be like after you get it had me in a chokehold, man. <laughs> I was trying to fight out of it. <laughs> That thing had me, <laughs> had me in the chokehold, man. It had me wore out. I was trying, I, I thought I need some counseling, man. I said, man, this thing, this thing I need some help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know there's some of the stuff y'all want to say. That's why I'm saying it. <laughs> that thing had me wore out. I said, well, I got I to gotta stop this. It's, it's, it was beating me up. It was, it was so bad. You know, it was like. Uh, you know, every almost like every break I had, I found myself. I, was, I said, I gotta stop this. I'm telling you. I'm t- when I say when I mean break, I used to work. So on my lunch break, Come on. on my lunch break, yeah, Pastor, yeah, Pastor Eli bought it. Was me. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> it was me. It was me. I was on my lunch break, <laughs> and I'm out there. <laughs> you know. Uh, me, me and Hannah was getting it in, man. We was, we was <laughs> Palmer, leader. <laughs> Come out to work like ain't nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, and we weren't doing fist bumps back then. Man. I come back in. <laughs> I just want to wake y'all up. But <laughs> I'm saying this because you know people don't talk about this in church, and y'all going through it, and y'all looking at me like I'm saying something strange. That's why, you know, you, you, we, we pull up your phone record to see how many times you deleted the, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, Try to delete your history and all that stuff. You, you can pull that stuff up. You can do it. Take, take that phone and to the technician since you want to look at me like you're deep, like you ain't never been on it. You been in that phone last night. Yeah. I ain't going to expose nobody. All right. Let me get back. So we got to be careful. Got to be careful. That'll carry a spirit and it will hold you down. It'll change you, and it, and, it, and, it, and it will cause you to treat people different. 
So even in a relationship, you'll treat that relationship like it's porn. Oh, my God. You can't even go to the movies. You can't go hold hands nowhere. As soon as there's a, a hand fill, you, you know how y'all interlock hands. This is my mama now. We can interlock hands. <laughs> interlock hands like that. First thing they do, you know, they feel like we got to have sex. Because you done got porned out. You, you, you know, porn and all, porn, porn, porn. And then what porn, let me, it's about to get a little more heavier now. So not only do porn lead into uh, homosexuality, but it also leads into bestiality and also it leads into child pornography. That's why you got to be careful of it. Because now you'll start, now this ain't, let me, let me make this a claim, but that ain't never happened to me. But, but if you, if you, <laughs> make that clear. But, but if you, if you get to, if it, if it holds you down long enough, you can't escape it. See, the way people are designed is that once they reach a certain altitude, they want to go further. They want to do something that they've never done before. This is why people start off smoking weed, then they start lacing it with stuff. Because the regular high ain't getting it no more. So now I got to put some uh, angel dust in there so my eyes can cross a little bit. <laughs> and then I'll do, this, is, this is what people do. Because that, that high just isn't good enough anymore. And this is where people get to the point where, Seth, they'll start to sex out. And, and, and sexing out means that, you know, you've, you've had sex with, you know, a, a man having sex with a woman or, or multiple women, they sex out. And so they want to try something different. And this is how you have all of these famous people, they start going into homosexuality. They start going off into, you know, child stuff, you know, weird stuff because they sexed out. And that sexing out come from here. That porn, because now you done had sex with yourself and 50 other women, or a thousand of them, however many times you watch it. All right. All right, let's keep going. All right, how much time is left there? All right, go to Matthew, I mean Mark, chapter 5. Oh, good question. All right, so angels came down in the form of a man's body, and devils can't do that, so they possess people and animals. Yes, they possess people and animals. So your, your animal could have a demon, too. My God, y'all must have never read your Bible. Y'all ain't seen, y'all remember the, the, the demons went in the pigs? Spirits want to get in anything. Trying to find out why your, dog, your cat is jumping and whacking off everybody. <laughs> And you can't, you ain't better cast it out of no animal now. That, they, they, all right. Mark chapter 5 and 1. I got to get y'all out of here. Right. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him off the, off, out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. All right, Joel. I'm up front now. You should be able to hear me, huh? <laughs> all right. And he went and come out of the, the ship. All right, read, huh? And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. A man out of the tomb. Watch this read, huh? And had his dwelling among the tombs. This guy lived in a graveyard. Cemetery, if you will. All right, read, huh? And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. They, nobody can hold him down. Because they try, that to he they try to chain him up, they try to hold him down, but nobody can hold him. Uh, read. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, uh -huh. and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, uh -huh. and the fetters broken in pieces. Now, if you've ever seen some, most case scenarios, when people got the devil in them, they got like Superman strength. They have they have strong power. That's why when sometimes working with demonic spirits, you have a few people work with the person because so I don't see the you know demons in people, little people. They be throwing people. I got what, what in the world. Because they get a different type of strength because of the spirit that's in them. All right, read, huh? Neither could any man tame him. Nobody could tame him, huh? And always, night and day, he was in the mountains. He was in the mountains? And in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stone. He was out there cutting himself with stone. Now, let me ask y'all a question, and I'm about to close. Let me close my stuff up here. 
And because we're going to deal with this, we got this going to be a few weeks. I'm going to deal with this on win next Wednesday night as well. All right? So if you see somebody out there at, what's the cemetery down there? Moore's Hills, whatever. Y'all yeah. see somebody at the Hills cemetery. Mortuary. Hills Mortuary, somewhere out there. Out there, cutting they self, nobody can hold them. What's the first thing you're going to say or what you're going to do? You're going to try to go get them admitted where? To the hospital, you want to send them to Georgia Regional in Savannah or one of these places, right? Because the church has lost its power, so everybody looks towards the doctors. So when you see stuff that's abnormal, they say, well, we got to send them out there. They got to go down there to, the, to, 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 to go see them folks in Savannah because something ain't wrong, wrong with their mind. Something ain't right with their mind. But the Bible says something with, sort of different. We're supposed to deal with these things. Read, huh? But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him uh -huh. and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So now, this is not the man talking. This is the spirit inside of the man. So most case scenario, when people are full of the devil and got demon possession, they'll start talking out. And sometimes we deal with the person and not the spirit in the right. person. And so that's because people don't have education on how to deal with demonic possessions or demonic forces. You don't deal with the person. You deal with the spirit in the person. Remember, and just like I told y'all before, you can be demonically possessed or demonic influence. When Peter was telling Jesus that he wasn't going to do what he was supposed to do, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. I rebuke you. He didn't say Peter, but he said Satan because he was talking to the spirit that was influencing Satan. Mm -hmm. Read, uh-huh. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Now, who is Jesus talking to? He's talking to the spirit. He's not talking to the man, but he's talking to the spirit that's in the man. Read, uh huh. And he said, excuse me, and he asked him, What is thy name? What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion. My name is Legion. And Legion is not. Really, see, when, when people say legion, they, they think that, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's a devil's name. No, that, that's an indication of how many. Because Jesus used the same term. He said, I'll call down legions of angels. Yes, sir. So legions is dealing with many. I think I looked up the word legion, and it is, it's almost synonymous to like maybe 500,000 or about a million. Between that, between 500,000 and a million. So he said, so, so this person had hundreds of thousands of spirits in them. What the world? How you get how you get hundreds of thousands of spirits in you? And to have you out there cutting yourself in the tomb and all that stuff like that, it it, it gotta be more than one. Read, uh-huh. For we are men. For we are <laughs> listen how you talk. He said we. <laughs> so when he said we, that's an indication that whatever's in them is more than one. Mm -hmm. Read, uh-huh. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Uh -huh. Now there were there nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying. So now you see how the Bible call them devils. They don't call them demons, but the Bible call them devils. Uh -huh. Devils besought him, saying. Uh -huh. Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Send us into the pigs so we can still have a dwelling place because we want to be seen. Demons want to be seen. This is why uh, people get possessed because demons are anticipating a home. Because the Bible says that our bodies are houses. Mm -hmm. So your body is a house that homes you. My God. See, you didn't know that your, your, your soul is inside of them. So inside of the body, see, a lot of times we look at the body, we think that this is us. What you see in the mirror, ain't you? It's what's inside of you. So this is just a house. All right, read. Uh -huh. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. So the spirits went into the what? Swine. So that tells me that if the spirits got in the swine, then the spirits could get in any type of animal. Mm -hmm. Read. Uh -huh. And they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Uh-huh. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. 
and they, they, they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legions sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. So he was sitting, <laughs> he was clothed because he, he didn't have any clothes on. He was naked running around. And a lot of times, a lot of spirits, it'll make you take your clothes off. See, if, if you remember, and I got to let y'all go, but if you remember, you look in the book of Exodus, when they started worshiping another God, what was the first thing they started doing? Clothes Taking the clothes off. Yeah. They started stripping. Because you want to know why? Because they, Satan, Satan, he was an angel that did what? Covered. covered. So he's not the angel that covered anymore. So if he's not the one that covered, what do he do now? Uncovered. uncovered. So now you see you know, people that undress and taking off all this stuff. You just see random people just taking all their clothes. And, hey, 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 what's going on? Spirit. Because that's not, that's not a, a, a normal behavior, if you will. All right? All right. Uh, is that the end of that text? There's some more. All right? Is that it, Joel? And they come to Jesus and sit around possessed with the devil and the legion sit in clothes right mind, and they were afraid. 16, what's 16 say? And they that saw it told them how it befell them to him that was possessed with the devil uh -huh. and also concerning the swine. Uh -huh. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. Uh -huh. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Uh -huh. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friend, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and have had compassion on thee. And uh -huh. he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. This is why it's important that things like this happen in churches. Because a lot of times people will see a demon manifest and somebody cast out a demon. People start getting scared and packing up. They start putting Bibles on their head and everything. Let me go. <laughs> it's getting old. <laughs> Say, Lord, Lord, cover me. <laughs> There's no demon that a transfer or jump, jump from one person to another. That's not how spirits work. Whatever get cast out of you, that's your that, that's your that, that's your uh, demon that follow you for the rest of your life. The Bible, that's why the Bible talks about. See, you gotta be careful when you go back to old stuff or old habits because the Bible talks about you gonna bring they're gonna bring seven more plus the one. Right. Now, how you gonna get all of them to come? They was already following you. So everybody that had past spirits or delivered from spirits, that stuff follow you for the rest of your life. All right, I'm done. Everybody, stand, give the Lord a hand, praise. I gotta finish this. Got to finish this next Wednesday. All right. Uh, I think we got a couple of first time.